Hello and welcome to another video. I'm Michael and today I'm going to be showing you how to get started with mixing in FL Studio. We're going to be covering all the basics and I'm going to give you sort of a three-step guide to how to mix inside FL Studio and get started. Now mixing is a huge topic. I can't possibly do it justice completely in this video, but I'm going to just show you a strategy to get started, keep it logical and keep it really creative inside FL Studio. The one thing I want to mention before we start is that mixing is unique to the individual. There are no rights and wrongs. There's no best way to do it or anything like that. Over time, you're going to develop your way of mixing. I just want to share a few things that I find really help the process. So I have all of these tracks loaded up in a session for one of our original songs. And these could be MIDI clips, they could be VST instruments or audio, which is what I have in this case. Whichever ones you have, they all need to be sent to a unique place on the mixer. If you're completely new to FL Studio and you don't know what the mixer is or how to use it, I'd recommend just checking out the video I'll link here. And if you've seen that, you'll be up to speed and ready for this video. Let's do a quick comparison between something that's completely unmixed and something that is mixed, just so that you can start listening for differences between the two versions. So I have a version here that's completely unmixed. And what you're listening for is sort of the lack of punch in the drums, you know, the bass drums hardly there. Some elements will be overpowering, some elements will be lost in the mix. And then in the mixed version at the top, everything's a lot more clear. There's a lot more punch from the drums. There's a lot more depth, clarity to the song. So let's take a listen. First, the unmixed version. That's the sort of thing that we're going for in this tutorial. We're looking for that clarity, that dimension, and just a nice overall balance. When it comes to mixing, there are hundreds and hundreds of tips, tricks, and techniques that you'll be picking up over the next couple of weeks, months, and years as you continue producing. And because there's so many tips and tricks, we often reach for those sort of fancy or advanced tips first. And we start like putting on crazy VSTs and doing all sorts of complicated stuff. But really, the keys to a good mix starts all the way back in the songwriting and the arrangement. You need to make sure the arrangement is clear, concise, focused on what the song wants. And then you want to make sure that everything's balanced. Now this is step one. Step one is just setting the right volumes for everything. We're not reaching for EQs, compressors, we're just trying to set the volumes right. When mixing, it can be good to start at the very start of your song, because if you try to start in the chorus or somewhere where there's too many elements, things can just become really overwhelming. So we're gonna start at the very beginning of the song where there's only guitar, vocals, and an atmosphere. We're just gonna start by taking a listen. Clouds of smoke covering the Another starry night. What I've noticed is that the atmosphere was a little bit consuming when it came in and the guitar was really boomy, which I'll probably fix later with the EQ. But to start off with, I'm just going to turn the volume of the guitar down and turn the volume of the atmosphere down. The only technical thing to look out for, the only numbers to look out for, is to make sure that your master bus isn't clipping, so it isn't hitting zero. As long as you're below zero, you're good. You can be minus 12, minus 6, minus 9, all of these are good levels, just make sure that you're not clipping the master bus. So let's make these changes whilst we're listening to the song. Clouds of smoke Covering up another starry night The city won't sleep now the atmosphere is a lot more subtle and everything's sounding slightly more balanced. Let's go to where the next thing comes in, which is the drums over here. And the snare is much louder than the bass drum, so I'm going to take the snare down slightly, but the bass drum just doesn't have enough oomph in it, so I'm going to uh, raise the volume of that. A place where I can smile. And this process of just balancing things is what you're going to do throughout the whole song. So you're going to carry this through to the chorus, through to the bridge, and you're just going to try and get it to play from start to finish with everything sounding 
okay. It's not going to sound perfect because we're, we're not finished the mixing process yet. Along with setting volumes, we can also set panning and stereo width in this step if you want to, but try not to go overboard with it. In this mix, I don't have an awful lot of elements here, so I'm not going to pan anything left or right. But if you had two guitar parts, for instance, you might want to pan one left and one right. If you had two competing synth parts, you might want to put one slightly right, one slightly left, give it a little bit of space. But what I am going to do is I'm going to use the stereo separation on the atmosphere to give the atmosphere a little bit more stereo width. Here it sounds really thin and mono. Here it sounds a little bit wider. So that's step one, which is just setting all the volumes right. Step two is where we start cleaning up the sounds. So we're going to be removing unwanted frequencies and trying to add some more clarity to the mix. Let's start again at the beginning, and I'm just going to listen to this guitar again. Clouds of smoke covering the now if you're listening in decent headphones like me, or you've got monitors, you'll notice that this guitar is super raw recorded, it's just an acoustic guitar, it's really boomy and resonant. So I'm going to go over to my effects chain, now yours might be on the left or the right hand side of your mixer, I'm going to add in a parametric EQ2, which is under the filter section of your effects. EQ is going to be one of your most powerful tools to shape a sound. It's going to help you balance sounds so that their tonal balance or the distribution of their frequencies makes sense. In this case, the low mids of this guitar are overpowering. So the first thing I'm going to do is select a high pass filter and I'm just going to roll off unwanted low end. When mixing, I wouldn't advise listening to things in solo, but I'm going to solo this guitar so that you can really hear the changes very closely. drag a little bit more down here. I'm going to boost the highs slightly. And now when I turn this on and off, you'll hear a really big difference. And the reason I wouldn't recommend tweaking in solo is because I have no idea how this is going to fit in with the rest of the song. So I'm going to turn everything back on briefly and I'm going to listen with the rest of the song. Now I would say that that balance is an awful lot better, it's a little bit thin, but it's not getting in the way of everything else yet. As well as just removing excess low end, it can be good to remove any frequencies that are really getting in the way. Now I can hear in this guitar that there's a really annoying frequency somewhere between 7 and 8k. That's what my ears are telling me anyway. I don't know precisely where, but I'm going to take a listen for it. And it's on this note here, it's kind of this really sharp ringing sound, you'll hear it. Right there. So it's somewhere in this range. I'm going to sweep across and we're going to find it. Right there. And if I just remove that frequency now, this is going to sound an awful lot better. I'm going to raise this back up to show you the frequency that was the problem. And if you're listening in headphones, that's going to be a huge difference. When it comes to picking the right slopes and how far to pull things up and down, just use your ears. Always use your ears when mixing. Don't really worry about what it looks like. A lot of people mix with their eyes too much, and I know I still do, and I did at the start. It doesn't really matter if it looks crazy or if it looks really subtle or too big. You just got to use your ears and your, let your ears guide you. If it sounds right, then it is right. I'm going to move on to another sound, which is the atmosphere. And what I'm noticing is that I want to push it louder in the song. But when I push it louder, it seems to be rumbly and overtaking everything. So I'll show you what I mean here. I leave behind the world and Whenever I raise the volume, it just sounds too rumbly and confusing. But when I take the volume down, it sounds like it's completely lost. So this lets me know that the, the balance of that sound isn't quite right. So again, I'm going to reach for an EQ. And again, I'm going to remove low end. There's a theme here when cleaning up sounds that often you want to remove the low end. Unless it's your bass drum or your basses and your subs, you really do want to remove the excess low end in these sounds. So I'm going to choose a high pass filter and I'm going to remove this. Again, I'm going to solo it just so that you can hear the differences, but you don't want to do this soloed in your actual mix.
I'm going to turn this on and off and you'll hear all the rumble. Now I'm going to turn everything back on and I'm going to push the fader up until this sounds balanced in the mix. Now what's great is that I can push the volume of that sound up, give it its space, but it's not rumbly and confusing and competing with everything else in the song. So that's the second step, where you go through each track one by one while listening to it in the context of the mix, and you try to address if there's any problems, if there's any excess low end, excess high end, just whatever it is, try to clean it up a little bit. And at this point we've set the volumes right in step one, we've addressed any panning and stereo width, and we've also cleaned up all the sounds. So now we're in a perfect position to start adding effects like delays, reverb, saturation to really make this mix come to life. This is where you really need to have some vision in your head. You need to think, what do I want this to sound like? My raw guitar track could end up sounding like anything. I could run it through a guitar amp. I could make it really reverbed and delayed and distant. I need to know what I want so that I can work towards it. So in this case, I'm gonna take the guitar and I'm gonna make it sound a lot more spatial and reverbed. So let's try that. So I'm gonna go over to my guitar track. I'm going to add a fruity reverb too, which is just here under the delay and reverb section. If you need to know more about how this plugin works, I'll link a video just here, but I'm gonna tweak some parameters in here until I get it to sound the way I want. So let's listen to everything together. To find a place where I can smile So I climb Up to the highest place I can I leave behind Oh I leave behind the world and all its plans So I climb At this stage it's also important to remember the order of your effects If I put the reverb first Before I clear it up it means that all of those muddy and bad frequencies will be running through the reverb and then I'll have to clear them up later. Often it's better to clear up a sound first, then run it through one of the effects, and then after the effect you can then continually process it and you're not just sort of amplifying it and propagating it through your song. So that's sounding better to me with that guitar reverbed, but now the, the snare and the bass drum sort of stick out because the snare is like super dry, and the guitar is all reverbed, it doesn't really mesh, so I'm going to add a tiny little bit of reverb to the snare drum to try and put it into that same space. Now, although I've added reverb to these two, the mixing process isn't all about adding reverb, so you don't just want to add reverb to everything, that's probably not the best way to go about it, but in this case, the sound was sort of calling for reverb. Too many thoughts oh, I need to get out I'm just upping the decay time so that the reverb slowly dies away in between snare hits. The next thing we're going to do is address the vocals and we're going to try and treat these a little bit. So I'm going to add an EQ to the vocals and we're going to remove some low end and make them sound a little bit more airy and bright. Too many thoughts. There's all sorts of advanced tips, tricks, and techniques you can apply. You can do de-essing, you can do special delays, special reverbs. Those are techniques that you'll develop in time, but for now we're just giving an overview of how to do this process. So I'm going to add a little bit of subtle reverb to the vocal, again to place it into the same environment as everything else in the song. Too many thoughts, oh, I need to get out. At this stage, you'll also want to be looking at adding compression, adding choruses, adding delays, and any sorts of effects that your song requires or is sort of telling you to put on. Often listening to other music for inspiration will uh, help you figure this out. If you listen to someone else's vocal processing, you'll hear specific delay timings they're using, and you can try to match that or sort of bounce off that as some inspiration. Or you might hear someone's really cool guitar tone and you might mess around with a chorus or a phaser plugin until you can figure out that sort of tone. But when it comes to the creative effects part of mixing, there's absolutely no rights and wrongs. Just feel free to express yourself however you like. But that three-step process should really start you on the way to mixing in FL Studio. The first one being setting the levels correctly, 
Second one being making sure that you clean up the sounds that need to be cleaned up so that everything's sounding balanced. And the third step is applying your artistic effects. And although this process started with setting the volumes and then clearing up the sounds, it's important to remember that you can do things in different orders as well. After you apply your effects, these will change the volume, so you need to adjust the volume again. You might apply a reverb that adds a lot of low end into the sound, so you might want to then add another EQ and cut away the low end from the reverb again. So you're not locked into a specific system or a template, you're just going to have to figure out what works best for you. And remember that at all stages in the process, it is really important to mix with your ears. One of the things that I found really difficult at the start was detaching myself from how cool all the plugins looked and what the plugins told me was happening. So I would EQ something and I'd convince myself that it sounded right because I'd run it through an EQ or I'd add reverb and the plugin would look all shiny and nice. So I'd kind of just assume it sounds good, but you've got to remember that well over 99% of the people listening to your music don't know what a DAW is. They've never seen your project. They don't know what effects you've put on it. All they care about is what it sounds like. So try to detach yourself from the screen and really let your ears guide you. And I can't, I can't stress this one enough. Often when I apply effects, I will hover over the solo button or the mute button and I will close my eyes and I'll click that button like 10 times until I don't know whether it's muted or whether it's on. And then I open my eyes. Often I like the one with the effects, but sometimes when I open my eyes, I actually like the version without the effect. Sometimes when I'm compressing something, I turn off the compression and I actually like it more. So you've got to remember that just by applying effects, it doesn't mean that your sound is actually going to get better. You must keep using your ears and keep judging what you're doing. So I hope this video has helped you get started mixing in FL Studio. There are loads more videos on this channel where I show sort of much more advanced and in-depth mixing of our own original songs, but also just tips and tricks in general. So if you do feel like picking up maybe one or two tips and tricks to help you along the way, please do feel free to check out a few of those videos. But thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Each time.